you'd slap the breast, it was still spinning in motion, and it's like a a Ferris wheel of water. Wait, I can't, I'm actually crying. Your baby's mouth is just there trying to grab it, like. <laughs> Apologies, episode four, baby. There you go. What would you do? Um, we've had a wiki reaction on socials. We have. We've loved it. I mean, people, people have gone re- like they're like, okay, this is my drive to work sorted every mm. single morning. It's like what people have been missing on the radio. But for a lot of new listeners, I, I'm just so happy you get to see us like stripped down and uncensored. Yeah, ex- that's exactly what I was gonna say. Without any of the. I'm really scared this was said. There's been there's been a few times <laughs> where we have, and by we I mean Brand JJ and Nimi. I'm not going to disclose who said things. We all know that is a bit left field and accidentally flew out of one's mouth. But there were times during the radio show where I genuinely was like ready to pack my bags and deport myself from the UAE. No, there were times, I think you're being very light with that. JJ literally had tears in his eyes and was like shaking because he thought that was game over. I'm going to have to pack up my wife. We're going to have to head home and I'm going to have to be a plumber. I was a genuinely considering packing my bags and leaving that day just yeah. in case on the off chance someone heard it and complained. But no one complained. No, well, that's because no one was listening to our show. Oh, thank goodness. But this is why we're doing What Would You Do? Because it's fully our own and ownership is so important, people. No, but the thing that made that brand JJ and Nimi said on that particular show would have got us deported from doing this podcast as well. I'm, oh, d- I'm yeah. just shocked from it not happening. But we like to kick off the show with something we found online just to kick off the funnies, get us JJ and Nimi into the mood of the show. I feel it always takes us a while to warm up. What is the worst case of oversharing you have seen on social media. I can tell you right now for free, I've said it in a previous episode, JJ sharing photos of his baby. <laughs> Catherine listened to that last week. What did she, she say? Was like, is it annoying? <laughs> like genuinely, she's just trying to be funny. Like, is it actually annoying? <laughs> No, it's when I say annoying, I'm just like, okay, we get it. You have a baby, but like, I want to see more of you guys as well. Before Phoenix came about, so mums, we had a lot of JJ and Catherine content. There's no none anymore. And there's none. We don't anymore. get pictures anymore. The last picture we got was actually taking a picture of us on the rooftop. And honestly, I wanted to literally jump off the rooftop <laughs> no. after it. I couldn't believe. You know when you get the light directly above <laughs> oh, you. Oh no! I look That's not shot, a good I look. tired. I look yeah. like a, a dad. But no, Catherine was saying that when. Before we had kids, I hated it. I hated it when people posted like yeah. oversharing of their baby, like everyone has had babies or whatever, not everyone has them, but it is a bit annoying when you're sharing it too much. But now we've had a kid. Yeah. I love seeing other kids on socials. I love seeing parents posting how proud they are of their kid, doing funny stuff. Like I'm I'm more engaged in that content. Parents back me up. It's actually we don't mind it as much. Yeah, I think the parent world on social media is very, very different. And yeah. I respect it. I just don't want to be a part of it. Like you quickly become that annoying auntie on Facebook, just comment on everyone's stuff going, oh, he's so cute. Oh, I love her. I can't Ugh. wait to see her and all this. I oh, know I've become a horrible person. Yeah. What is the worst case of oversharing you have seen on social media? A woman in my mum's group on Facebook complained that her husband was cheating because she found pictures of another woman's vagina on his phone. <laughs> Did you have to say the V word? And apparently it was a pretty ugly one. People asked her all day long to show it. And in the end, she did. Turns out her husband had tried to check on his hemorrhoids and took close up pictures of them. It's been years and I still feel bad for the guy. This, that, I'm just vomiting. Like I'm getting so many visuals of this whole situation that I just did not ask for. People need to talk about hemorrhoids more. I'm not sure if I have them, <laughs> but I feel like... If I did, then they need to be spoken about more like it's normal. Why do I feel like you're going to go home and take some pictures tonight and then Catherine's going to see them and she's going to think you're cheating, but actually it's you. No, it's just my little grape on my bum hole. Ew! What is the worst case of (laughs) Have you ever heard of the term TMI? Too much information. (laughs) Like I said, I don't know if I've got them. No, a friend of mine actually did. He had... um, hemorrhoids and i'm not going to say his name because we both know him um he had a hemorrhoid on his bum hole <laughs> and then he used he got oh, i can't believe really i'm not going to say who it is say I'm, it no i'm not saying who it say is it. honestly no i can't the people want to know the people don't know him but you know him. okay or her oh no, it's oh. definitely him um so basically he ate a magnum mm. and then the stick of a magnum he kept by the side of his bed 
because obviously like a hemorrhoid can get itchy yeah and he'd grab it and just scratch his bum hole with it no jj can we like restart this, this is episode episode four baby <laughs> we're in we've warmed you up yeah the first three episodes with a mere lubricant from episode four horrific i know okay <laughs> everyone can tell what type of mood jj's in today what is the worst case of oversharing on a podcast mm. just what we did that. just then yeah this is on social media this girl smeared her soon-to-be ex-husband's name and talked about how he had slept with over 30 prostitutes, lied and had a small dick only to post my everything three days later on her profile. Oh, that is classic, isn't it? I follow those couples on Facebook. I know which ones they are. It's the one that share too much. Like, There's a girl that I know that is constantly just smearing her fella. Like, he does this, he's a piece of... He's not looking after the kids, he's doing X, Y, and Z. And then two days later, just being like a kissing photo, being like, my world, my everything, it's, it's my heartbeat. It's the couples that like unfollow each other, post like crazy things on their stories and like also like quotes like about love and mm. like, you know, you haven't found the right one when, or like captions Even on Even though them. they're married. Even though they're married. <laughs> Find a guy that treats you the, the princess you are. Yeah, captions like on their photos, like, oh, I'm happier now. You know, like all these things to make it so obvious. Like, girls, we get it, okay? Ross but and Rachel, you're about they? to go back to him in two days' time. Literally. Those who film themselves crying, I always end up questioning, if you screw up the recording, do you like restart crying all over again? Or... <laughs> that is so true. I've actually done that a couple of times. What, crying? But, but this is when I was like crying from like laughter maybe, but I've never I've had to that. redo it. No, I. so the thing is, I'm pretty good at it. So I'll be like, <laughs> oh, yes, mate. Oh, yeah, cheers for that. It really made me laugh. And then I like slip up and then redo don't send it. it. And then I go, oh, let me go again. <laughs> yes mate yes mate top joke <laughs> we do that all the time what is that like it actually scares me how good we are at that no no acting yeah um a girl i knew in high school started dating a new dude i logged into facebook one day and she posted something along the lines of he <laughs> if he doesn't make you squirt he's not a real man Oh, bear God. in mind she is at least 27 years old with three kids and a fourth on the way my jaw hit the floor for the next hour or so. Her family was in the comments begging her to take the post down. Oh, my God. No. I'm sorry. Do you ever get that, like, pit stomach feeling when, when like, you you wake up to, like, loads of missed calls from people? Oh, right? Yeah. I, I, I instantly think that I've posted something by accident on mm. my social media or something. I just think I'm going to get bad news in some way. Oh. Yeah. Like my brain just goes there. Like someone died, something bad has happened. That's just trauma, isn't I know, it? That's childhood yeah. trauma. Let's trauma, talk about let's it, discuss. Babe. Let's talk about it, babe. Yeah. Um, I just love it. If he didn't make you square, he's not a real man. Yeah, but like, so what? She's saying that her new guy did make her square or no? I just want to know is it real? And whose kid is the fourth kid? That's what I want to know. I want to know is it real? What? Squirting. I don't know. It must <laughs> I just be. don't know if it's actually a thing. That's because you can't make a woman do that. That's what I'm saying. Is it real? I don't know. In the comments, guys. Yeah, let please. Us know. Let us give us. I mean, we spoke about the parenting world and now we're in the squirting world. Yeah. So, like, just it's tell a natural us. transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, let us know. Uh, the worst one was someone who had just gotten her first credit card. She was so happy about it. She took pictures of the front and back of the card, then posted it on social media. Oh, yeah. dumb, 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 dumb. A Dubai dumb. scammer's dream. Yeah, I that. mean, really, they're just waiting for you. Then your mum gets scammed. Did she? Are we not talking oh about that? Oh my gosh, yes, she <laughs> did. God, so okay, did we talk about that? She did. Because then everyone be like going to Nimi and then finding a mum then scamming her because she's like the easiest person to scam. You, you've got a really good memory. Yeah. yeah, she did get scammed and it was literally like the person was just like, hey, so you're going to get a cent of four pin code. Can you just... No, what group was it on Facebook? It was like a Facebook community Facebook group. No, it was a community Facebook group. And then they asked her for a WhatsApp number. And then she moved to her WhatsApp number. And she was like literally speaking to them one on one. And she just thought it was just like a given and a normal thing. And <laughs> let's bear in mind, my mother is a CFO. Mm. She is chief financial officer. Of a very large business. So you would think that she would know these things exist, but no. So basically she was just handing them the pin code and got hacked and all this stuff. Anyway, she's just... <laughs> 
Like Catherine did it, had it once, and like Catherine is a dream as well for scammers. So tr try your luck. I feel like I've trained her now. She got a message from Aramex saying, "Can you please put your credit card details here to receive a shipment mm. for an order or delivery?" She'd never even done. Yeah. She's like, "Oh, maybe I." JJ did and put it yeah. into my name or something like that. So she literally filled out all of her details and then she had a notification saying card declined for 700 euros, like literally <gasps> like an hour later. I don't think I've ever been scammed, but like, I don't know if I, so I got a message the other day, yeah. a text message that said it's Dubai police. Oh, you got that one. I got that one. And I feel like a lot of people got yeah. it. And it was like, this is Dubai police. Um, your Emirates ID is not verified on your visa or something like that. It was just something along those lines. Anyway, obviously I panic. I'm at work in the middle of the shoot. I still call them. It says call this number. Yeah. Cause that was when I was going through my visa process. Yeah. And so then I call them up and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? They're like, yeah, we need you to give us these details and this. These. That's when I clocked on and I was like, yeah. okay, there's a guy on the other side saying that he is from the government, the ba the government, no, the Bank of Dubai or something like yeah. that. And I was like, that's not real. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> exist. Bod. So basically we all just need to know our banks yeah, because yeah. they tried to scam you that way. Anyway, I just started talking to him. I was like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Oh, and I feel go. like we all need scam chat. Did you did you suggest a therapist again? <laughs> yeah. I was like, listen, I'll drop you my therapist what number. Childhood trauma you've been going through. <laughs> I get it. Everyone's struggling post COVID. Went into that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> oh, me and Catherine were talking about struggling during COVID the other day. Didn't want to make this podcast COVID chat. Yeah. But there's a T-shirt Catherine wants to get me made from a quote that a bank said to me mm -hmm. um, when I was literally on my knees crying because I couldn't afford car payments. So remember it was like going around that you could like delay car payments for yep. like three months and get like a thing where you don't have to pay it. Yeah. And we weren't being paid really on the yeah. radio. So I was like, I can't afford my car, but don't worry. People are going to the bank. They're gonna sort mm -hmm. it out. And um, so I went down to the bank and the lady was just typing at a computer and I was like, hello, like this is my situation. I'm on... X amount of my salary. I literally can't afford food at the moment. Like I'm paying for my wife. She works in events. There's nothing mm. we can do. Really, really struggling. Can I please extend my car loan for three months so I don't have to pay it? And then I'll start paying from yeah. there because hopefully the world would have sorted out. And she was like, there's nothing I can do. Oh, and no. I was like, please, like, like, please, I know banks are doing this. Like, please, I was literally like almost crying at this point because I was so poor. Yeah. Um, I was like, there's literally nothing I can do. And then she went, I cannot help you. <gasps> Tell us what. <gasps> and it looked me dead in the eye and I was like, you what? <laughs> you what? You what? I'm literally on my knees crying. And then she went, Tell us what? <laughs> like telling me to basically F off. <gasps> Go away. That Tell is us so what? Harsh. So Catherine wants to get me a t-shirt that says Tell us what? <laughs> that With is I cannot brilliant. help you on the back. That is brilliant. Yeah. What an iconic moment. Yeah, I know. It literally was like the darkest moment of my time and something we still laugh about three years later. How on my knees I was crying. Khalas, what? Wow. I cannot help you. And I bet you still remember her face and everything. I do remember her face. I mean, we wish her well. We wish, obviously, everyone, like, everyone was really, going through it. Everyone was going, going through, through it. it. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Yeah. What a nice way to warm us up. This is the What Would You Do podcast with JJ and Nimi, and this really requires your input your stories, things you're going through, where myself and Nimi will tell you what we would do in those situations. We've just had a slight blackout of the light there, Dakshi. If you can just fix that, that'd be amazing. Oh, there it's go, just but turned we're back on. on. We're back um, on. Plug it back in uh, properly. We are a professional environment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we need your stories. So it's like stuff you might have gone through from work, something you might have gone through at school. Um, it could be situations that happened years and years and years ago mm -hmm. that you want to bring back. Everything's completely anonymous. It could be a bad first date, a bad relationship. Uh, your parents are annoying you. Yeah. Um, your doctor did something weird. I, I don't know. Just, I'm yeah. just throwing things out there. Look, it's day-to-day -day stuff. It's the stuff that you would never think in a million years would happen. We just want to hear it, okay? And we will give our spin and our take on it. I also want to apologise for this episode. I have got a bit of a <laughs> sniffle. Nice. I've got a bent septum. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Is that what people say when they get a nose job? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been trying to fix this for ages, but hopefully I'll get it sorted out. But yeah, it's bent and it's like annoying. Okay. And it smells. It's all right. I'm a bit phlegmy too. So yeah, we're okay, in it cool. together. Yeah, okay, cool. It's a phlegmy episode. Um, so I've got a what would you do from a lovely listener. We Are you won't ready? say their name. We They're anonymous. Not. So you no. can write whatever you want and we won't judge. Mm -hmm. So Miss Anonymous says, 
Funniest story happened to me yesterday. A random woman barged into my apartment at night, wasted AF, looking for her boyfriend. I know this happened in the marina. <laughs> looking, I just know. Looking for her boyfriend who turned out to be my neighbour. She was on the phone screaming and crying. She didn't know which apartment he lived in brackets which is pretty odd and was randomly knocking on people's doors and barging into each apartment on my floor i'm really curious to know what you would do if that happened to you have we found out what this person has done no she said i'm not going to tell you what i've done un un until i've heard what you guys would do but knowing this... her because i know her so she came in just barged into the house, yeah. kicking, screaming, confused. Yeah. Did she then walk out? She's crying on the phone, screaming and shouting, probably swearing to as well. To a boyfriend. Yes. Trying to find the boyfriend, but literally barging into every apartment on the floor. And people in this apartment are just like... She'd be terrified straight away because I'd tend to bet I'd be bollock naked in my house. <laughs> I'll be running around in circles, <laughs> bollock naked, knee, ball bag slapping my leg, running around in circles, terrified of what to do. Also so excited, a lady's just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Most action I've had in a while. So I feel like she would be screaming on the phone, but then see you and start screaming in a very different way. <laughs> not, not excited yeah, at not, all. Not like excited. genuinely terrified. Like there is a man in my house, I reckon naked. I, I would just be absolutely terrified like, i reckon i would scream back <laughs> <laughs> you know like, i feel like she'd be screaming and then i'd going, be screaming ah, <laughs> yeah. ah. just back and forth but also what's concerning is like how do you not know which apartment your boyfriend's Thing in is, Limmy, this story i've heard loads of times <gasps> i've heard this happen so many times of like people getting really drunk yeah and then trying to walk into their apartment the all apartments look the same i've walked in on another apartment before I've never done that. On the that. wrong floor. I just walked in, embarrassed. I have to a, a whole theory. family just trying to enjoy their dinner. <laughs> Hopefully not naked. Sat down, had a meal. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for two, she got on then. I, I hope, I, I feel like I have a theory here. Go on. Okay, hear me out. She's going into each apartment because that's maybe not where her boyfriend lives. Go on. But she is like screaming and shouting because maybe she thinks he's cheating on her. So she's going into every apartment. Mm. To like find her. Thing is, that did pop into my mind that she would have walked in, saw another lady in this apartment, and just lost her mind yeah. that she was having an affair with her boyfriend yeah. or something. But that that wasn't the case. Have you ever been like that drunk or like off your head where you know the answer, Jess? <laughs> where like you've been looking for someone or like you end up somewhere you're not supposed to be. We have a friend called Lucas who I feel like this has happened to a hundred times. He's always just lost and confused. Yeah. I wonder with you though, have no, you ever... I, no, there was one time at a hotel where I was, like, it was my birthday, I think, and I went to a hotel with Catherine. And like, I have this really not cool thing that when I'm really drunk, I feel like she's fell out with me, so I'll fall out with her. I'm like, obviously then, oh, go and then it's over. Then it's obviously done. It's finished. Like It was good while it lasted and all this stuff. And she's like rolling her eyes off. For fuck's sake, here we go again. Another weekend. I another don't... Saturday. And then basically we, I I thought she'd fell out on me and then walked out. She actually walked out to the balcony, but I thought she'd walked out the hotel room. Oh. So I then walked out the hotel room was just looking for her for about two hours. I got so bored, I just jumped in the pool at like 3 a.m. <laughs> fully clothed, just jumped in the pool. And then the lifeguard was <gasps> sprinting over to me going, don't jump in there. Don't jump in there. We've just put chemicals in. It will burn your skin off. No. It was fine in the end. <laughs> and then well, I walked back and Catherine tell. was still on the balcony, just looking out whimsically like, where, where have you been? I was like, oh, I was looking for you. She was and then I dived in the pool while you drenched. <laughs> <laughs> she, so you were going through this whole whirlwind of emotions while she's there's, just jamming on the balcony. There's something about that specific hotel, by the way. That's where uh, our friend had a wee on the balcony, just randomly. What on earth? Yeah, also, she just stood there, just having a wee on the balcony. Our so friend? Confused. Yeah, yeah. I know her. Yeah. As in my friend. Like, I have a... Because I don't have many friends. <laughs> exactly. So you know exactly who it is. No yeah, way. Yeah, her, yeah. Really? Well, she just stood in the corner. <laughs> she was stood in the corner with a skirt on. Me and Lucas walked into the hotel room and she was just stood in the corner just having a wee on the floor. <laughs> no. Like a dog. <clears throat> I feel like anyone who decides to go on a night out with you or Lucas... Is in for a good time. Well, she clearly had a good time. Yeah. She relieved herself. What are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the what would you do? <laughs> yeah. So what would you do in that situation? Yeah. 
that is that is pretty much it. I'll Run around scream. naked with my balls out. Yeah. Nimi would just scream back and forth. Yeah. But I would like to know what she did. Yeah. Well, find out in the next episode. Find what, out in the next episode. What a tease. A mum who was traumatised. Apologies, it's a mum story. Mm-hmm. Close your ears. Go on. Um, <gasps> how is the content not available anymore? Did they delete it? Because it was so raunchy. Was it naughty? I know the premise of it. Okay. Um, a lady was really busy at a wedding. She brought her bags with her, walked into the wedding. Um, and then this lady, her friend, was like, oh, you're obviously you're holding a lot of things. Let me please hold your baby for you. Okay. I'll look after, which is a very normal thing to do. You, you've you got your hands full. Let me hold the child so you can actually just sort your stuff out. Okay. The lady went away, went to a hotel room, dropped her bags off, come back down. She was like, where's my friend? Where's my kid? Walking around the hotel lobby and then went into this little side room where she then bumped, she walked into the site <gasps> of her bre- best friend breastfeeding her baby. No, 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 What would no. you do? <laughs> <laughs> so, Nimi, what would you do? That was the premise of it. That was on a news article, which obviously got deleted. Um, but what would you do in Ugh, such situations? I just got in... shudders at the thought of that. That's really weird. Yeah, in Kuala Lumpur. Oh, happened, okay. Yeah, very Malaysian. No, no, like that has no relevance. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, okay. Is it a cultural thing? I don't know. <laughs> no, but I don't think it no, is. No, I don't think, I think that it's... is anywhere in the world. Because she was very wow. shocked. Wow. Someone like, okay, so obviously someone needs help. Okay, we know that already. Yeah, but, but she's obviously had a kid recently herself to have, I think, breast milk maybe available. She did, but we don't know. Did she have breast milk available? The baby's double dipping and having a great time. He's gone for seconds on another <laughs> breath. Oh, oh, so she's actually feeding. Yeah, she's actually feeding. Which makes me think, like, how many times has she done this before? Pretty when I haven't been around, she's mm. offered to take my baby. Mm. I would be and then horrified. And she's like, because uh, something about breast milk is if you stop breastfeeding, then the, the milk stops. So obviously she probably had a kid like six years ago <gasps> and she's just tag teaming on other babies so she can just keep that milk flowing. Have you seen that documentary? I mean, this is so not relevant, but so relevant. Go on. Have you seen that documentary on the guy who literally donated sperm and like now has like over five to six hundred kids in the world? Have, is it an actual documentary? It's is an it actual worth, documentary on Netflix. Which worth I watch. watching. It's worth watching because haven't they is, told him to just please stop now? Like this has gone too they far. They have. He's actually banned from donating and his his sperm, but all the kids found each other. So they started this on this a website, I think, where you can find your family. Yeah. And they all one by one started finding each other. And that's what the whole documentary is about. And then it all comes together. And they like literally tried to get this guy in jail. Like he, he was charged and everything. What was he charged with? Because, oh my God, it's coming back to me. Okay, cool. He wasn't a sperm donor. He was the doctor that was oh, facilitating. This I have, yeah. Okay, he I was have. facilitating no. the sperm donor. No, yeah. But what he was doing, all of the, yeah. instead of inseminating the woman's and the man's and the, with her husband's, yeah. he was actually going into another room, jerking himself yeah. off, yeah. and then using his sperm into and the inseminating woman. the woman. And the woman had no idea. So there was obviously, like six hundred kids that all look a bit similar, considering. They shouldn't at all. And he was getting such a massive kick out of it. And it lasted for so long. He got away with it for so long. And um, I think he's still, he was still alive when he's I was still, watching the documentary. He's still jerking himself off happily. <laughs> I'm sure he still is in happily jail joking. or something. But it was just vile. That is wild. Anyway, that's why I th- when you back said breast the, milking. Back and... to the important subject, the what would you do? Yeah. What would you do if you had a child? Mm. You bared a child, Nimi. Let's say in real terms, you're 75 years old. Yeah. That's about realistic yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, you're 75 years old, you've got a kid, another grandma next to you, breastfeeding your baby. What would you do? I would genuinely like call the police. Oh, that's the first thing you'd do. Yeah. Oh, no. The, first thing, initial... uh, the first thing I do is like. <gasps> yeah. Imagine you just walked in, the, the lady's breastfeeding your baby, and you just go, hang on a minute. <laughs> Boop, boop, 911. Boop. 911. Hello. Emergency, please. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. An old lady's breastfeeding my child. Can you help? Is it an old lady? Oh, just this is your scenario. Oh, okay. But no, it's just the normal. Middle Let's age. reenact it. Okay. I'm Am walking I in. the baby? Yeah. Oh, you're, okay. You're I'm holding the my baby. baby and you're breastfeeding. Okay. I'm going to walk this in. This should be too difficult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you always do it. Okay. Three, two, one. <gasps> what the? Give me my baby. No. 
She's <laughs> feeding and she's hungry. Give me my baby. She's starving Help! to death. She's Help! starving to death. Help! You're obviously not doing anything over there with yours. It's obviously not tasting well because she's been gnawing on this for a good half an hour since you've been away. You obviously don't care about your baby <laughs> that much. And now I'm going to flip over to another breast. Thank you. <laughs> now Sorry I'm... about that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Indian on your ass oh, and I'm going to Bollywood slap you so hard, but with the back of my hand. I thought you were about to say I'm going to do the Jai Ho dance <laughs> in good Bollywood style. <laughs> no, but seriously, I would slap. I would grab and run. <laughs> you would slap my breast out of my, my baby's mouth. Your baby's mouth. <laughs> wait, wait, I... <laughs> You'd slap the breast so it was still spinning in motion and it's like a, a Ferris wheel of water. <laughs> wait, I can't, I'm actually crying. Your baby's mouth is just there trying to grab it like... <laughs> Thank While you're you. doing Jai Ho in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What a visual. Oh my god. I'd 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 smack it good, I think. I'd I am usually good with my targets. I'd smack and You'd get smack and run. the boob and the hand at the same time, baby <laughs> flying in the air and just catch it peacefully in one arm. And run. Lift your top up and go, there's a tip. Mm. Actually, I think I'd take a photo of it. What, the boob? <laughs> you take a nude. <laughs> I'd have to take a photo. A woman is breastfeeding your baby and you're there taking nudes <laughs> in the corner. You look at yourself. No, there's proof, there's <laughs> evidence. Because then she'll just say, oh, it's your word against mine. He's free and backwards. We need to do more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I have actual tears. I'm so Same. done with this topic. Same. It's actually um, horrifying, guys. Like the fact that that actually happened in real life to someone. I bet. Well, quite in a Malaysia lover. of all places. Yeah, that's messed up. They're like a real. Um, they don't do stuff like that there. No, they're normal. You would <sighs> think. Oh, gosh, that was terrifying. Glad we got through that. Dax has like got tissues in his hand because he's been crying as well. All uh, right, Nimi's had another fight in a shop apparently. I, I actually have. So like, let's recap last week. You're in Zara. A lady put her hand over you. <clears throat> She went, what are you looking at? Why are you pulling this face? You're like, this is my, my face. face. Yeah. This is how I look. And yeah. she was like, and she was Indian. And because I'm Indian, I disclaimer, I can say this. She was like super Indian attitude. You know, like, excuse me, what does this face? And all this stuff. Anyway, so oh. that was that. A week later, I am in Bur Dubai. I'm in Karama, specifically Mina Bazaar. Okay. Mm. Mina Bazaar, for those of you that don't know, is Little India. Yeah. Okay, and I was there because I was getting the suit designed and all of this stuff. Cool. My mom was like, let's let's pop into that supermarket because she wanted to see what Indian ingredients she could get because she's cooking for me at the moment. Mm. Went into there, got a couple of things. We're waiting in the queue. Okay, so I want you all to imagine this. Three tills, okay? Yeah. All occupied by <clears throat> people buying things. So there's like products either side of me to the left and right. So I stand in the middle of that aisle waiting for either of the tills to free up. Yeah, okay. So it's like you you could be in a queue with three different lines. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. yeah cool. But it's just one like main a H &M. one. H&M. Yeah. H&M have that, yeah. But there's just one main one and whatever comes free first, you go to that. Yeah. And this is a really tight aisle. All of a sudden, this guy's like, oh, excuse me. And I turn around and he's walking by, like squeezing past me mm. to go straight to a till. Mm. And, okay, I just come back from India. Okay, so I was like... What is the concept of queuing in India? There is none. Okay. There is zero, yeah. okay? And also, like, no level of personal space. Mm. There's no understanding of it, okay? In there, up in your grill. Yeah, and so he walks by, he's like, oh, sorry, excuse me, goes to the first till. And my mum just goes, did he just... And before my mum could even finish her sentence, I snapped and I was like, excuse me? And I really shocked myself with the excuse yeah. me because... Normal Nimi would just allow it. Mm. She would let it happen and be but like, This is two oh. weeks on a bounce now. Someone in a right. shop has, has a Right. Major. I feel like people are actually intentionally doing this yeah. to me now. Obviously, heard last week's episode and is now just getting up in Yeah. Your so I said, Excuse me. And um, he was like, Yeah. And he's loading the, the, the belt at this point. And I was like, There's a queue. And he goes, So why didn't you, why didn't you come through here? I was like, Because I'm waiting for a till to become free and open at this point his elderly indian mother is with him as well yeah. okay um, but i'm just directly talking to him 
And I was like, do you just have no concept of queuing? Do you have no decorum? <laughs> do you, we did that come out? We did that decorum and chat, but amazing. no, not with him. Okay. And I was like, there's a concept for queuing. This is what I'm doing. And I think it's really rude and really disrespectful. Why are you doing this? Anyway, he just kept loading. Mm. Anyway, me and him just kept going back and forth. And his mum, all of a sudden, turned around. Old Indian, like cute woman, like, you know, cute little. Yeah. And she turned around. She was like, excuse you. And I just like, <laughs> at this point, I looked at my mum to like come in because then mum to mum is mom, like just have acceptable. It out. Celebrity death match, mum to mum. But like also as an Indian, I cannot speak badly to an elderly woman. It's just like not in our culture to speak badly to mm. elders. So I was looking at my mum. So you turned to, like, to your elder. <laughs> I turned to my elder. I was like, you better step in. You yeah. better. She didn't say a thing. Wow. My mum did not utter a word. She defended my honour. The first story that we spoke about a few episodes ago. But now ago. she's realising maybe Nimi's the problem. Because <laughs> yeah. this is happening way I'm, too often. I'm the common denominator. <laughs> anyway, I thought, let me just break it down in Hindi for them. Because mm. maybe they're not understanding in English. And at this point, you're burning, yeah? Yeah. And so I, in Hindi, I was like, do you have no concept uh, of, of a cue? And then once I said it in Hindi, he went nuts. Like he went nuts. He started like loading the bag like really loud, and I, then he started splurting in Hindi back to me. At this point, what I was don't he really, saying in Hindi? I couldn't understand you speak, it. Speak it, can't hear it. I think it was like a different dialect. Okay, cool. So he went different dialect on my ass, Fuck. which I obviously couldn't understand. Like Uno Kaja, Uno yeah. Reverse Kaja, and it was just awkward and uncomfortable. It was like tension in this little supermarket in the middle of Mina Bazaar. But I got home that night and I realized like maybe I'm just really angry at the moment. Mm. But also, queue jumping, it should not be allowed. I'm sorry, I have serious issues with it. Yeah. Especially driving here in Dubai. Mm. Like, you know, when people try to cut in, I feel like you're a cutter in, huh? Yeah, of course I am. See, <laughs> JJ, this is why... I've got places to be. No, this is why your and I friendship only goes to a certain point. Yeah, we don't get in the same cars. Because we don't have the same, like, ethics and values. Mm. Because I would never cut in. I would never... Even on the way to work at Channel 4, you never cut in? I never cut in. I always, like, I would hate that to be done to me, so why would I do that? No, in my head, I envision Catherine being pregnant next to me and we need to rush to our hospital. So that scenario plays in my head where it kind of justifies that I can do it and get there quicker. But but you do that for every situation? Yeah, every time. But that's not allowed. Reality, Have that. you ever had, um, uh, like, retaliation for cutting in? Um, yeah, like... There was a time once where a guy then cut up in front of me and then kept slamming on his brakes in front of me, like wanting me to bump into the back of him. Oh my God. And then it would have been game over It would have been game over because it would have been my fault. So like, I don't do that often. I'm just showing off for the ladies listening. Do you remember when um, when we were, when we used to work together and I had that mad car rage in the morning? Yeah. And then we found out it was the guy that actually works in our building. So we both entered the same building together and then throughout the show, I was fuming. She's like she was, we turned it into a radio segment, but she was genuinely seething. Like he like caught up in front of her, slammed the brakes in front of her, drove off, and Catherine like Nimi was like raging mm. about it. Um, pulled into work. He also pulled into work. Turns out he did the another radio show in our building. Yeah. And then we just kept prank calling the radio show. <laughs> yeah, we were trying <laughs> to call him. Then what we ended up doing because we're real mature adults, is I wrote a note saying, why are you so angry? <laughs> and I put it on his car windshield and we were just so proud you'd, of ourselves. You'd be not surprised to hear this, Nimi actually did put a therapist phone number on on the, I on did. The <laughs> <laughs> I, I did do that. Oh my God. Your therapist must be so busy. I should get commission. <laughs> Genuine. I should get serious commission. Genuinely. Oh man. What an oh. episode. What a day. I'm exhausted. Oh, what a day. What a day. We've gone through parents, squirting, yeah. um, breasts flying. Hopefully not in the same breath. Yeah, no. <laughs> separately. Very much separately. Oh, God. Uh, thank you for listening to or watching the podcast. Be on YouTube. Listen on your favourite podcast platform. Do give us a follow. Please give us a review. It means the world to us because you might not know this, but if you do get reviewed a lot, then you're like suggested. When someone's listening to another podcast, then you're more likely to be suggested as someone to listen to as well, yeah. which will obviously help listeners. Um, so yeah, really, 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 really enjoyed that episode. I hope you did as well. That was episode four, goodness yeah, me. Yeah, we love that. Please do keep sending any stories through, any scenarios, any situations that you've been through that you want us 
to break down, dissect, react to right here on the show. Message it to us either personally or to our Instagram handle, what would you do podcast uh, on Insta. Just drop us a message there. We'll go through them and you will be read out on the show. We want to get through as many as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, It was nice having one today with the drunken situation. It would be nice to find out what actually happened. Yeah, I'll let you know. I wonder if you fucked her up. Mm, Probably. Nice. Uh, Thank you for listening. See you next week. 